Thank you once again for joining us this afternoon to hear about the Masters of Sports and Exercise Physiotherapy and Masters of Height. Um, sports and exercise physiotherapy, double masters with high performance sport programs that we're currently running at Australian Catholic University. My name is Maria Constantino and I'm the course coordinator for these two courses and I'll be telling you a little bit about them this evening and um, how you may apply. First of all, before we continue, as this tradition a customer, customary at ADU, as ACU, we, today, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the country and their continuing connection to land, sea, and community. We honor our elders, past, present, and emerging. Just a little bit about myself. I, I have been a physiotherapist for more than 30 years and a sport and exercise physiotherapist for more than 22 years. Um, as these pictures may show, I've had the opportunity to work at, very, at a number of major events such as the Olympic Games, the Commonwealth Games, as well as other major games. And I have met a, a number of um, colleagues and friends over the years. I have learned a great deal. Um, and that as well as uh, contributing to various committees, such as the International Federation of Sports Physical Therapy, enabled me to um, bring some of my learnings and my experiences into these programs that I will be presenting to you about this evening. So uh, I'm going to talk about the postgraduate degrees in sports and exercise physiotherapy and high performance sports. As I mentioned before, we have uh, the single masters, which is um, 120 credit points, and it's usually around about one and a half years full time equivalent. Um, and this enables people that may want to exit early to obtain a graduate diploma in sports and exercise physiotherapy after a uh, sorry um, a graduate certificate in sports and exercise physiotherapy after 40 credit points completion or a graduate diploma in sports and exercise physiotherapy after 80 credit points completion. Um, the double master's with high performance sport is 160 credit points uh, or two years full-time equivalent. And once again, it allows um, the same exit point at a graduate certificate or a graduate diploma in sports and exercise physiotherapy. And this is, um, for students that may start the course and for some reason they may not be able to, they may not wish to continue due to personal circumstances or other circumstances. However, there are no entry points at these two um, programs, at these two levels. Um, the only entry points we have at, at the master's level. And I'll be telling you a little bit about these programs, what they entail in terms of the, the content, the different um, units and the different streams we have running through them as well as how to apply um, for your enrollment. Um, now, these programs are going to be run through what we, the uh, ACU online, and they're going to be um, uh, providing you with more study flexibility. So with ACU online, that they, you're able to study full or part-time, and it gives you flexible learning. Um, there's an entry to a possibility to enroll in either of the programs in term one, which is at the end of January, or in term three, which is in July, um, so that we do take a mid-year entry. Um, the study mode is mostly online. Um, it is multi-mode because we do have some face-to-face -face components, which I'll be telling you about shortly. And um, for student enrollment, we take Australian residents, which we call the onshore, and we also take overseas students, which we call offshore students. And these students will also pay the same fees as our domestic Australian students for tuition. And there's more information about both of these courses at ACU online at the link that I'll be providing you as well at the end of the presentation. Now, just to tell you a little bit about ACU online and the terms. So the traditional way is, is semesters. And uh, we have been running the course in semester one and semester two of 2022. But from 2023 onwards, the course will be running in terms. And these are short, shorter duration terms of about 10 weeks um, with a more intensive um, study, but it allows you to complete each unit, each course a lot faster. So we have four terms in 2023. These are the dates that these terms will start. And then I'll show you what um, units will go under each of these terms. So term one starts on the 30th of January. 
and complete by the 9th of April. So as you can see, it's very short duration, but you then able to progress faster onto the next unit or the next term. Um, the term two starts on the 24th of April to the 2nd of July. Term three starts on the 17th of July to 24th of September. And then term four starts on 9th of October to 17th of December. Um, so the other thing that um, to know about this is that they are they contain eight weeks of um, teaching content. There is four weeks of content, one week break, four weeks of content and one week assessment. And that's what we call a 10 week term. Um, this enrollment closes so for, for January 2023 commencement. Um, in, enrollment will close on the 16th of January, 2023. Uh, for mid-year entry, if you're deciding to start the course in July in term three, um, enrollment will close on the 3rd of July. So these are important dates to bear in mind because they will um, allow you then to end, start the course at your chosen time. Once again, more information is provided about the academic calendars for SEU online in the link that I'll be providing you again at the end of the presentation. Now, what are the admissions criteria for our course? To be eligible for admission to the course, um, an applicant must have completed um, certain prerequisites that we have stipulated. Firstly, um, you have to have a bachelor or a higher degree in physiotherapy, and you have to hold registration to practice physiotherapy, either if you're an Australian resident with the Australian Health Professions Regulating Authority, or if you're an in, um, from overseas, with a professional registration body or accreditation body in the country where you reside and where you practice. Also, we ask that applicants have a minimum of two years clinical experience after graduation as a physiotherapist. And one of those years has to be in the musculoskeletal and or sports area. And that's because you will bring some of that experience and knowledge into the program, um, but you'll be able to then enhance that knowledge and advance it further through the course. Um, there's another um, requirement as well, a criterion for international applicants um, who need to meet the English language proficiency requirements as defined in our coursework admissions policy, um, programs policy, um, which you'll see in the um, link again that we'll be providing at the end. Now, this is what the Masters of Sports and Exercise Physiotherapy course map of 120 credit points looks like. And I'll just go through some of these units, but I'll also explain them a little bit further when we, when I um, explain and go through the different streams of content that we have. So this is, um, there are, as you can see here, 12 units. Each one, we call each one of these a unit um, within the course. And each one of them is 10 credit points. We have physiotherapy specific units, as you can see with PHTY 614, um, 616, 615, 617, and 618. And then we have exercise signs, um, coded units that incorporate, say, what injury prevention, strength and conditioning, as well as um, you can see here, exercise rehab for return to sports performance. We also have within the course um, research units at 40 credit points. And these start from semester, um, they start from the first year. So introduction to health sciences research or qualitative research methods of biostatistics, and then a capstone of a research project that needs to be completed um, by the end of the course. And if I just show you then the um, course map for the double degree, you can see this is for 160 credit points, and we have 16 units in this one, so an extra four units, an extra full-time semester, will um, give you um, a Master of Sports and Exercise Physiotherapy and a Master of High Performance Sports. So what you'll see here enough is that there's four additional units. And if I highlight them, you can see that there's an additional exercise science unit looking at contemporary practice in stress and conditioning, um, an exercise science unit on fatigue recovery, adaptation and performance. And then you also have two, the option of doing two electives in high performance sport or an industry internship, which is worth 20 credit points in high performance sport. So these are options we give um, students to be able to meet some of the um, their personal preferences and career aspirations. 
So then going through the themes, just to give you a little bit more background into each one of them and how we design this course, um, there is, uh, I suppose, an exercise physiotherapy and clinical practice theme. There is a high performance sport theme, and there's a research and research project completion theme that's running through the course. So if we go through the first thing then, the sport and exercise physiotherapy theme, you can see within that that we've got the five physiotherapy units I talked about. The first one, advanced 614, is um, advanced principles of human movement for exercise and sport performance, really has uh, a recap of ana functional anatomy, applied biomechanics, exercise physiology and pathophysiology of tissue healing. And as physiotherapists, we all have studied this at some time or another in our undergrad. We now take that and apply it more in the sports and exercise content and revise some of the main principles as well as extend the knowledge as it relates to sports and exercise. A very nice unit that gives you a lot of learning and a lot of baseline um, to base uh, content to build on in the subsequent um, units that we have in physiotherapy. THTY615, clinical exercise for health and performance across the lifespan. Now, and one of the important things to, to note is that our course name is Master of Sports and Exercise Physiotherapy. As physiotherapists, we also treat people who participate, who exercise for health, but we also use exercise um, for prevention and management of health, chronic disease, and to improve performance. So this unit really has two main modules in it. One of them is looking at clinical exercise for health, or looking at for in, um, prevention and management of chronic disease. So the importance of exercise in people with osteoarthritis, in people with osteoporosis, in people with cancer um, and long COVID. So we cover a lot of these topics and how the physiological changes as well as the benefits of exercise. And the second module is really looking at specific populations, so such as um, the child athlete, the adolescent and aging athlete, the female athlete, and looking at what are some of the different considerations we need to take into account when we are um, providing support for these athletes to improve their performance. PHTY616 is our core clinical um, unit for clinical practice. And this one looks at um, reviewing and extending knowledge on management of musculoskeletal and sports injuries for physiotherapy. And this one also has a, um, a clinical unit, uh, uh, sorry, a professional practice experience component within this, um, this um, unit. And I'll be telling you a little bit more about that later. Similarly, PHTY615 has a professional practice experience component within this unit. Now, PHTY 617, physiotherapy is working in sport, is um, specifically about physiotherapists working in the sporting environment, on the field and on the sideline. It's about quick decision-making processes we have to make when we're working in that environment and understanding the demands on the athletes, understanding the requirements of traveling with with um, teams and athletes, and also understanding some of the ethical considerations as well as drugs and sports. So it's got quite a, a lot of content along those lines and about the role of the physiotherapist in the sporting environment. Um, it, this unit also has a professional practice experience, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later. And the last physiotherapy specific unit that we have is the leadership management and advocacy for sports and exercise physiotherapists. This unit will really provide information about um, being a leader and a manager within a, a um, sporting environment, uh, about working in high performance sport as a manager, about how to advocate for, for services for your athletes, how to tender for, um, uh, to be a physiotherapist for a team or to manage a sports medicine event. So there'll be a lot of information along those lines. And, and, and building the leadership management and advocacy skills for physio physiotherapists working in sports, uh, sports and exercise physios. And the next thing we have is the, um, no, just to expand a little bit more, is the clinical practice in sports and exercise physiotherapy or the professional practice experience. And as I mentioned before, 
these three units have a, a component of professional practice experience. We have in 615 about 40 hours of clinical practice, um, including supervised practice, mentoring, and case reflection. And within this one, we assign a mentor that uh, usually uh, links with, uh, sorry, a supervisor that links with the student once a week for 10 weeks, uh, sorry, for um, once to twice a week for eight weeks um, to make sure then that they go through um, a supervisory practice as well as um, clinical reasoning, looking at case scenarios and discussing case scenarios and progressing the clinical reasoning process. And the focus of this one is really looking at populations with chronic disease or athletes, athletes with specific, um, in specific populations and looking at how to enhance their, their skills of sports and exercise physiotherapies in this area. The so HGY 616 has about 70 hours of professional practice experience. Um, and this one is about um, eight hours or so um, each week for about seven weeks, eight to nine hours. And this will involve a, um, about two hours per week of um, linking with a supervisor who once again will be able to observe. Um, and this is done by Zoom and be able to observe the, um, the a physiotherapist treating in the clinical environment, um, be able to look at videos, um, self-reflections with the um, student and be able to provide um, supervision, mentoring, as well as facilitate clinical reasoning and enhance their, um, provide support to enhance their knowledge. Um, PHTY 617 has about 80 hours, but this is self-directed, and it involves um, being a physiotherapist for a sporting team or at a sporting event, looking at field to play and sideline practice. It involves writing a report as well as a self-reflection and uh, keeping a logbook of um, the experience. And each one of these units has a lot more information about each of, each of these experiences, um, should you decide to um, and go into the course, we will be providing you with more information. Now, the high performance sports theme that we've got running involves the, um, as I mentioned before, um, a unit on specifically on strength and conditioning for performance and rehabilitation, which is um, really important for us as physiotherapists to have sound knowledge in this area and be able to provide an enhanced program for our um, athletes that are returning back to sport, um, as well as um, returning to performance. Now, there's another dedicated unit on sports injury prevention. And once again, this is something that's very important as a physiotherapist. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the International Federation of Sports Physical Therapy competencies that we have based these courses on um, a little bit later. But one of the specific um, competencies of a sports physiotherapist that's required internationally is knowledge and expertise on sports injury prevention. And the third unit in high performance sport that we incorporated into the single masters as well as the double masters, of course, is exercise rehabilitation for return to sports performance. So this is um, complementing this unit, the HDY 616, where we're looking at rehabilitating our athletes um, back to the to training, back to sport, returning them back to performance, but this will uh, provide you with more knowledge and experience in returning them to their optimal performance. Um, and so additional units in high performance sport, if you're undertaking the double masters, the masters of um, sports and exercise physiotherapy, master of high performance sport, is a unit, as I mentioned before, on fatigue recovery, adaptation and performance. As another unit that extends your knowledge further in strength and conditioning, as well as two electives or an internship. And then we have, as I mentioned before, these are, uh, I did mention two electives. These are some of the electives that you may be able to um, undertake um, if you decide. So performance nutrition is one of them. You can also do data analysis and interpretation for high performance or um, uh, an internship of your choice, an industry internship of your choice that meets the requirements. And the third thing that we've got running through the program is 40 credit points of research, like I mentioned before. And you can see that these research units um, include um, a base introductory introduction to health sciences research unit, 
then we've got qualitative research methods or biostatistics and health sciences, depending on if you want to do a research project that involves qualitative methodology, research methodology, or if you want to do um, quantitative research methodology. And then research project A and B, are, um, research project A allows you to submit your ethics, develop your research methods, and research and collect your data and research project B allows you to write up your manuscript based on your data collection. These are capstone units that are done usually in the final year of your course um, to be able to um, produce a manuscript um, as a result of your research project. And it also facilitates your training in undertaking research um, to allow you, if you are interested then to continue on to higher research later on. So um, this is a little bit more about the research theme. As you can see here, um, we've got research project A, which is, as I mentioned, data collection and collation. This can also be done at this time. Um, it's done in a summer semester. Um, so it may be possible to allow more time that way for the research project to be completed. The importance about these projects is that um, they need to allow you enough time to complete your, your data collection and write up. And so we have individualized discussions with students, assign a supervisor that will work with you and support you in a topic of your interest. Now we, um, ACU Online uses um, Canvas. Canvas is a, a new learning management system that we've been, uh, we're adopting at Australian Catholic University. And I'm just going to present the video, but I'm not sure if I'm sharing um, sound. So let's have a look and see if sound is coming up when I play the video. Excuse me for a second, or I might come to it afterwards. Let's see. I don't think there is a sound to it. So I'll send you the link with the introduction to Canvas, but this tells you a little bit about the, lear the learning management system that we'll be using, which is going to be um, very intuitive and very simple to use, but it will provide you with step-by-step um, -step, um, instructions, and guidelines. Um, as you can see, you've got week one, two, three, four. Um, there's eight weeks of content and it, and your content will be available under each week. You'll be able to um, identify where your assignments are, your assessments are, and also um, um, the discussion forums, as well as um, opportunity to ask questions. Um, so yeah, I do apologize. Um, I will replay this at the end of the presentation um, because I will need to reshare my screen with the voice. So we'll go back to the presentation and then we'll come back to that. So um, important information to be aware of about this course. So the, for the specific physiotherapy units, we have some requirements um, so that you can complete your professional practice experience. So for those requirements, we um, you need to be working as a physiotherapist with patients in a sport and musculoskeletal setting. So you need to source this work yourself. And for, for example, in this year, most of our students are working in their own um, work environment, whether it's their own clinics or working for someone else. We set up an agreement with the, the manager of the facility um, and the students um, allocate about seven hours to eight hours per week um, to their to their professional practice experience. They keep a logbook um, and they use some of the, that time as well to link up with their supervisor. So that's why we said it can be undertaken within your existing work. And um, you need to keep a logbook and, and um, we give you some specifications and some guidelines to show evidence and then um, write and then submit that logbook 
um, signing it and confirming that you have completed those hours. But we also, as I mentioned, assign supervisors to link in with you on a weekly basis, um, depending on the unit. For example, 615, it's once a week. 616 is at least twice a week um, to be able to provide you support um, for your learning. And for PHDY 617, like I mentioned before, this one is self-directed, so you don't have a supervisor, but you do keep a logbook and, and complete a detailed report uh, for submission, assessment submission at the completion of the uh, semester. Uh, sorry, the completion of the term or the 80 hours. Um, we also have two face-to-face -face intensives. This is for PHDY 616 and 617, which are going to be running in term three. And 616, um, includes one week face-to-face -face intensive component, uh, which is really going through all the practical skills of assessment and treatment in physiotherapy that, that um, are important, and then having a clinical viva at the completion. Um, and then PHDY 617 has got three days, um, two of which are practical activities on on-field assessment management and retrieval, um, case scenarios, and then there's a a viva at the completion of the three days. And these are required because as physiotherapists, we have, um, we, we're required to have good handling skills and good practical skills. And we wanna ensure the graduates of this program um, meet those requirements. Um, and this will be, both of these units have been scheduled in term three, which starts in July to the um, end of September. And the reason that this has been done so that if you need to then, um, if you live interstate or overseas and you need to come to the um, Brisbane campus for this intensive face-to-face -face component, that can be undertaken back to back and you only need to fly into Brisbane once. So, Important then to mention, I guess, what is the driver behind some of the content that we've incorporated into this course um, and what competencies are we aiming and striving to achieve. Firstly, we've got the Australian Physiotherapy Association or the APA. The Australian Physiotherapy Association has um, a career pathway for physiotherapists and, um, the, um, and the first tier is um, being awarded the title the APA um, title, APA Sports and Exercise Physiotherapy title. And as such, you've got to meet um, the framework milestone three, highly developed uh, for the sports and exercise career pathway. And as um, you may read here, a physiotherapist practitioner at this level delivers safe and effective management in all but the most complex or critical client presentations in their area of practice and will be expected to be involved in mentoring, supervision, teaching, and or research. Performance at this level is expected for a physiotherapy practitioner who has achieved at least a post-entry level qualification, master's level degree in their area of practice, or has demonstrated competence equivalence. Performance at this level is expected of an APA title physiotherapist. So this is important that then we have incorporated this um, Australian Physiotherapy Competency Framework Milestone 3 within all of the professional practice experiences, as well as with the development of the content. And this is the link um, for those of you that want to have a look at it further. Um, and then as Australian um, um, physiotherapists who have been a awarded a title membership in sports and exercise physiotherapy, then you can become a member of the Australian College of Physiotherapy. Once you have achieved or attained that level, then you can apply with the International Federation of Sports Physical Therapy to become an international registered sports physical therapist, something that I have um, applied for and been awarded um, along with a number of other Australian physiotherapists, sports and exercise physiotherapists. So the International Federation of Sports Physical Therapy, and as I mentioned before, I have been the executive secretary um, for eight years, from 2011 to 2019. So I'm very familiar with the federation. Um, this international federation now has 34 member organizations uh, with close to 20,000 sports and physiotherapists internationally. And they developed um, 11 competencies that are um, required 
of a sports physical therapist. And this can be found on the IFSPT website. Um, and um, this organization will provide opportunities then for physiotherapists registered and working in countries that are member organizations of the International Federation to become internationally registered sports physical therapists, like I, I mentioned before. So we have incorporated all these competencies as well in the 11 main competencies um, into the um, development of this course so that graduates from this program um, can also meet these competencies. So as a Master of Sport and Exercise Physiotherapy graduate, you do have the opportunity to, to work in Olympic team sports. So in Australia, um, these um, to be working with an Olymp Olympic team of the Australian Olympic Committee as a physiotherapist, you need to be a titled APA sport and exercise physiotherapist. And this is very important. And it's a recognition of the skills that, that are required to work at that level, but it's also a recognition of the title, titling process of the Australian Physiotherapy Association. And with the Olympics being held in Brisbane in 2032, um, we do have an opportunity to um, complete this, you do have the opportunity to complete this course, be awarded your title and apply to work with um, Olympic teams and sport. And and believe, uh, and for, speaking from experience, working at Olympics, it is an amazing experience, uh, experience of a lifetime and something that um, will provide you with uh, opportunities and lessons that will last you um, forever. You can also work in sports private practice setting as a sports and exercise physiotherapist. You can work in sporting clubs or teams, or you can work at different sporting events at national and international level uh, for visiting as host nation programs. One of the jobs I held as um, the roles I had at the Commonwealth Games in 2018 on the Gold Coast was as the physiotherapy polyclinic um, program coordinator, as well as the team physiotherapy program coordinator. And it is one where uh, we had a number of Australian title sports and exercise physiotherapists working in a, in a senior supervisory role within the clinic um, to provide support for um, physio physiotherapists that, that weren't at that level, but also um, for visiting team physiotherapists that were attending our clinic to learn from Australian physiotherapists. So it was a really um, interesting and worthwhile experience and something that uh, with the Commonwealth Games coming up in Melbourne in 2026 and the Olympics in Brisbane in 2032, I think we have a, a great opportunity for a number of Australian physiotherapists to work in that environment. Um, but it also provides us opportunities to work at management or coordination levels in, in different um, sport and exercise medicine settings. So now I'll go on to the um, double masters and some of the career pathways that you may be able to aspire to or um, uh, take if you complete the double masters is also the same as, as previously when you're with the master of sports and exercise physiotherapy, but you also can take employment at a sport um, in the high performance sport area. And there are a number of um, sports and exercise physiotherapists that are working as high performance sport managers in, in many countries as well as in Australia. Um, and you can then work with enhancing the conditioning of high performance athletes as well as optimizing um, the athletes or the team performance. Uh, you can develop programs to, to enhance the performance or um, to look at optimizing the athletes um, and the team's performance. Um, you can also look at management or coordination roles in that area. So some of the outcomes then of the course will include um, to help you to meet your career, professional career um, goals and aspirations that you may have, but also it can provide you with a pathway to um, a career pathway in sports and exercise physiotherapy and also in high performance sport. And uh, one of the things that we did when we developed this course is we had a consultative committee that um, comprised of um, lead um, sports and exercise physiotherapists from the Australian Institute of Sport, the Queensland Academy of Sport. Um, we had um, physiotherapists as well as um, exercise prof um, scientists working in the high performance area. We had um, 
uh, academics from different universities, and we made sure that we took into consideration all of the um, um, suggestions and to ensure that we provided an optimal course to enable um, different physiotherapists to attain this career pathway in high performance sports. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. This is my email. Um, we also have, as you can see, uh, links to the courses online on ACU online that you can get more information on as well as to apply for, um, submit your application for enrollment. So I'll just stop sharing for now and then I'll reshare to show the video. I think I need to reshare and share sound. Okay, so I just need to start this from the beginning. Welcome to Canvas, your learning management system. Canvas is where you'll access all of the content for your units within your course. It has a really neat user interface, which will make it easy for you to navigate and find all the information you need. On the left-hand menu, you can access the home, syllabus, modules, discussions, assignments, and other useful information. And on the right-hand side, key information and dates will be provided, such as upcoming assessments. From this homepage, you can launch to access assessments, the syllabus, or any of the weekly content. Although we can access the content via these buttons, let's have a look at them in the modules. Canvas presents all the content within modules, which we call week. The modules are made up of pages, discussions, quizzes, and other useful tools. Within the pages of a module, all the information you need to know is presented. Chunking the information on the pages makes it easy for you to digest. As well as the text on the pages, Canvas also allows for multimedia such as graphics, videos, as well as interactives for you to be able to play with. Navigating through it, all the content is as easy as going to next or previous. Let's go to next to have a look at the next page. You can also access all your assignment information. Everything you need to know about your assignment will be in the assignment page. From the due date, type of assignment and the waiting, as well as the rubric that you'll be marked against. Submitting the assignment's easy as well too just happens at the top. Explore all of Canvas, including the calendar, which is really useful. It will list all the units you're enrolled in and show you dates within the next week as to what will be coming up. So enjoy your unit and enjoy Canvas. Okay, so thank you. That's the end of the official presentation but I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. Are there any present, any questions from anyone? Um, so we have a question if a part-time option is available. Absolutely. In fact, most of our current students, we've got 25 students in this, our first cohort this year. Um, the majority are studying part-time because they're also working. And we have a very, um, the way that we've organized our units, there are very few prerequisites so that you can then keep progressing on 
with one or two units at a time. So for ACU online, if you do completing one unit per, per term, that's considered part-time. And if you want to go study full-time, it's two units per term. And these options are available. You can transition from full-time to part-time or vice versa, which I have a number of students that have done so. You can also start with a double master's and then decide that you only want to complete the single master's. Um, you can change your enrollment um, at, at a halfway if you um, so wish, or you can convert from the single master's to the double master's the way that the course is designed. So it allows you a lot of flexibility to be able to um, meet any work requirements. It is, however, important that when you are completing an intensive unit in a term, um, that you think about how much work you're also doing so that you don't over stress yourself. In other words, studying full time and working full time might be a bit challenging, so something to consider. We have another question. Will ACU assist students in finding professional sporting placements where hours need to be met? So what we have done and what we can do in terms of the sporting placements, um, usually we ask the students to self-source the placement. They, it can be a volunteer or a paid position. We don't um, mind. It can be volunteering for a school team or for a local community team, um, which is something that um, you know is, is possible to do. Quite often there's a lot of community teams that don't have a physiotherapist, so you can gain your experience with that. We have had occasions when uh, a student has, has struggled or something that they had planned fell through, and we've been able to provide some suggestions and contacts for them to obtain a placement, but we don't uh, normally will do that. Uh, but we can provide assistance uh, where uh, absolutely necessary. Thank you for those questions, Fashion. Are there any others? Okay, well, thank you very much for attending. And uh, the recording will also be made available for anyone that wants to watch it um, again, or if you know anyone who's interested in finding out some more information. And of course, I can be contacted as well at any time to answer any questions. So thank you. Mm -hmm.